The other place that people at the moment are getting their information, this is also linked to the pandemic. Since the pandemic, there has been a proliferation. We have greater access today, post-pandemic, to experts in the field, many different types of experts in the field, such as casting directors, actors, directors, you know, people who are already working in the industry. And I think this is wonderful, by the way. It has really opened up the industry in a way that we didn't have access to before. So I think this is great. But what I am find, finding is that you have a lot of actors, and I, and I meet these actors, these students all the time, I meet these actors all the time, who might say, so I might give them some kind of a note. And usually it's going to be a note that has to do with their craft, because this is my focus on improving their, you know, the actual process of acting. That is my, my focus. But then they might come back to me with something like, yeah, sure, Faye. Uh, I, I saw something, though, the other day by XYZ actor, right? Famous actor, most of the time, has probably won accolades, you know, Academy Awards, um, who said the exact opposite of what you just said. Okay. Now, I find this very problematic, and so I like to take the time to explain why this is problematic. Firstly, that person, if we're talking about an actor, if we're talking about a successful actor, we are talking about somebody who is perhaps one of those rare unicorns, and I'm going to refer to them as a rare unicorn. I mean, unicorns are rare by definition because they don't exist, mythological, right? But the point that I'm trying to make is that, these, that there are these rare creatures called the naturals. These are people who are naturally born with the skill, you know, to, to do great performances. They don't need much training. They exist. We like to look out for them here at the academy. Yeah? Drama schools select for them. There are people who are naturally talented, better naturally better at doing certain things than others. I certainly was never one of those people. That, that needs to be kind of uh, contextualized here. You know, I'm not coming from the perspective that you know, these people are somehow special, except for the fact that they don't need to do the kind of work that most people, including myself, had to do in order to get to this stage which I'm going to call the resistance-free. Uh, uh, there will be a whole lesson uh, on this concept of the actor being a resistance-free vehicle, so I won't, I won't get into it at this stage. So they, they'll hear this interview from said actor, and the said actor will probably, actor, actress, you know, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter, will say something along the lines of, oh, you know, I just, I just jump into the character, I, I wear the clothes, and I just instinctively... Do you know how long it took me to, do, to be able to do that? Probably seven years of rigorous training to be able to jump into a character instinctively. Okay, so that's the first part. The first part is that these people are probably naturals. And unless you are one, don't listen to that. It's wonderful, you will be there one day after you've done your technique, after you have gotten your body to be in that kind of, you know, resistance-free stage that I think should be the aim of your training and the end result of your training, the purpose for why you would train. So. That, that's the first thing for me, you know, they are most likely naturals. The second part of this is that they may not be naturals. They may, in fact, have had some, you know, a little bit of a, of, of a predisposition to, to do this thing, um, this thing called acting, which we're going to define in a little short while. But the, the second thing there is that they most likely have done a lot of training. Now, I'm going to kind of uh, go into this little example. If you've taken classes with me, it's possible, depending on the classes and the courses that you took, it's possible that I would have got you to do a specific exercise. And the exercise that I would have got you to do would be to go out there, collect, co or create a collage, create a list of the actors that you would like, you know, whose style that you love, elements that, you know, uh, you may want to explore for you, who inspire you and so forth and so forth. 
I do this particularly with people who uh, I coach and, and they might say, for example, you know, I want to go into acting. I want to be an actor. And they don't want to train. <laughs> and then, you know, they, they want to they go and, and be actors. So I get them to do this little exercise. And most of the time it's in order to kind of wake them up, alert them to the reality of, of our industry, which a lot of coaches, I think, irresponsibly don't talk about. And yes, I do think it's irresponsible to not tell our clients that, you know, in order to be good at this, you have to train hard and well. Okay? And I'm not interested in uh, these exceptions. In, in, there are always exceptions, of course. But I'm talking about what, you know, what the craft is, what the industry is, what the main path is. Uh, so I get them to do this exercise you know, go away and come back to me next week and, and you know, put together a list of, of the people that inspire you. And I've had this done, I've, I've had this happen many times where the actor would go away um, and come back with this, you know, come back with their, you know, with their target list, let's call them. And then we'll do a little exercise together where we look at where did this person train? And they see, they finally realize that these actors that in their interviews talk about the freedom with which they delve into character have done conservatory degrees at Juilliard, at Tisch, at RADA, at some of the biggest drama schools on the planet. From my own assessment, from getting people to do this on a routine, on a routine basis, it's the vast majority of actors. Those people that you hear who tell you that acting is instinctive. Now, if they haven't gone to a conservatory, they've trained with perhaps some of the best coaches on the planet, with people like Meisner themselves, with people uh, like Strasbourg themselves. Yeah? So I want you to consider for a second who it is that you're listening to and what it is that they're saying, where have they come from? Is it actually true? Is what they're saying right now actually true? Now, there's a reason why they're saying it and they're saying it because they are past that period of training. They're at the moment where they are now applying. They're applying their skills for real to, you know, to the job and learning it even more as they go. But they do this with this kind of a freedom that to at some level, even feels to them effortless. But, but this is the part that we have to, we have to kind of get right here. I invite you to consider who it is that is speaking to you. It happened very recently, actually, uh, there was an actress looking at the performance, uh, some of the performances uh, from a film, popular at the moment, and, you know, she was very, very convinced that this particular actress hadn't been to school. And I said to her, OK, just let's do a little bit more of a deep dive. And, you know, in fact found that she had been to Tisch and graduated from Tisch. OK. So, and, and this certainly adjusted her thinking. Wow, OK. So this person that is usually talking about, you know, the craft of acting being effortless, did apply effort, or at least the kind of effort that you would need to apply if you go to a school like Tish. So that is this section here on why I think you should be training and, you know, why you should stay away from the kind of classes that are focused on performance before you've done the work, the right work. And also just that lesson on when you hear, you know, people who are at a different, completely different level to you starting out, you know, telling you things like, you know, I just wear the character's clothes and then I'm, I'm then, you know, don't, don't fully believe them. They're saying it for the right reasons, but it doesn't mean that that's what you should be doing.